So the idea of playing with macro and micro for me was interesting with regards to this project. I mean, with that scale, you know, to, to, after we do the painting, to go back yeah. and actually photograph, you know, the thing is, now this is what the car can do. Then I'll say, okay, Sean, and Sean starts to do drive the car wide in ever decreasing circles around it, right? Don't get to do this kind of thing that often. Don't hyperventilate, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Go. Okay, now. Tell us what he wants to do. Tell us what he wants to go on for one. Here we go. A lot of people believe that cutting edge is like some kind of uh, it's a scene or it's a hip movement or something like that. Yeah. But it's actually not. It's actually about life and death. When you're on the, when you're on the edge of, of life and death, that's, you know, it's cutting edge. When you're on the edge of success and failure, you know, that the work needs to elevate and it needs to collapse, you know. When you have that fear of collapsing, something is keeping it up and that's what's keeping it up. That is the, that is the element which gives the work its power. Um, upon my uh, investigation into the lower ninth, I discovered this public toilet that was completely destroyed after Hurricane Katrina. Um, somehow I had this absurd idea of somehow installing a fountain in the center of the actual structure, of the actual toilet. I just, you know, I think that this, the idea of ephemerality was always really part of my work. Um, as much as the fountain is a kind of permanent structure, the, you know, the water evaporates. So it has, this, it has this quality of ephemerality as well. What I was attracted to, what I thought was right for this, was that he was he was mischievous, he was a little, little delinquent, that he was a, a, a playful a trickster, and I and I saw how free he was with his, you know, in, in his performance films. I saw how free he was with his with his mark, you know, with his uh, his painting, his drawing style, and how spontaneous it was, and it seemed ideal. Da, 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 da. Oh man, I can take some more photographs here. What makes them better is the light. We shouldn't film? Yes, so I never shoot digital. <laughs> Digital's for p***s. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Cool. Hey. There you are. Hey, Thanks for coming. Jake seems to have this ability to almost visualize my ideas. Look at your canvas, man. You're going to follow me like all the time. I see you. I got a camera. You know, I've, I've been kind of obsessed with cars from an early age, especially coming from Johannesburg with such a, such a great dependence on the automobile to get from point A to point B. Such a huge dependence on the automobile as a device to evoke status, as a, as a device to evoke eco economics.
within the automobile that I could realize and conceptualize, you know, works of individual works of art. So I remember my first use of the automobile was in 2002 in a work called White Walls. That's what I was drawn to in Robin's work was that more than anything there was this mischief and there was this this boy's view of things you know and if you think about it it's a bit like dipping the car was a bit like dipping the car a, a, a toy car in the wheels of a toy car into a pot into a dish of paint and drawing it over a over a over a, a large white piece of paper it wasn't really any different to that <laughs> Amazing. This looks f***ing wicked, eh? It's about a commercial, about a car, but it's also about painting. It's also about a new way to use painting. What we're really dealing with here is design. I'm not sure that the design of the car is any different than the design of a painting. I'm not sure which is, uh, which is more valid. Uh, and BMW, of all, of all the companies, has certainly done more for art than in anyone else. I mean, Andy, from Andy Warhol to Roy Lichtenstein, to so many uh, incredible artists have either painted cars for them or, or uh, made paintings for them of their cars and so on. So. Uh, this seemed a perfectly logical thing to do, and Robin Rhodes is the perfect guy to do it, and, and uh, Jake is the perfect guy to film it. I think it just, uh, it's the perfect package. <laughs> wow, wait a second. I think we're on to something here. You know, there's a, there's a lot of pressure to produce something noteworthy as a piece of art. I'm not going to promise you this is going to be fucking brilliant, because it might not be. Cool. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you got the individual control over each of your colors. This is the amount of paint. That's your throttle, basically. Okay. Fingers. Yeah, this is front, this is back. Yes, correct. You're getting it. The thing is, like, I'm not sure what the car can do in terms of spray, you know, spraying the paint into the tires. I'm not sure about what the mark, what marks I can do. So it's kind of like having to depend on technique. You know? I am an improv, impro what? Improviser. Yeah, it's like freestyle rapping. I love, I mean, this is freestyle. What yeah. I do all the time is freestyling. What you're trying to do is basically impossible. You're trying to make a work of art and sell the car at the same time. You can only do that by letting Robin go. And I gotta let Robin go, and we cannot dictate. Once the cameras start rolling, it's Robin's floor. Tell me when. It's hot, man. Now, I'll show you what's going on for one. Here we go. 
Here we go, here we go, here we go. And paint. Yes, that's, that's what we want. You should try and come straight here and in a heavy far left. You know what I'm saying? I like this. <laughs> Okay, blue is killer. You can go yellow now, no? You've hardly used any yellow, though. <laughs> Uh, do we have enough uh, blue paint? Maybe we can actually throw paint onto the can onto the ground. <laughs> so that's an abstract painting. Give me two more blue. Oh, they have to move. I want him to go. Hold that one second. He's gonna go forward Straight. and cut, Turn like that, cut right? in halfway okay. into the center. All right. So now, start turning, start turning right. And halfway into the center. Halfway in the center and, and reverse. Back on that line. Yeah. Yeah. And action. That's great. Yeah, I just want to walk this area, yep. this, this corner there. Really working the painting in there. Man, that's, that's pretty close, Jake. Yeah. Like, I was always thinking about like, what I could do not to make it so uniform. So I, I gave like five colors, like each, very simple, like each color, a different kind of shape or something. Yeah. And then I just came up with it like yesterday. Did, did, <laughs> did you really? That each color also corresponded to a, a painter that we liked and felt was relevant to this. And there was usually a German painter. The color palette actually relates to a series of abstract paintings. The red palette would refer to a, a painting by Mark Rothko the yellow to Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm, the green to Gerhard Richter, uh, the blue to Yves Klein's body paintings. He's a very intellectual uh, young man, and uh, his things are very well thought out. But he works in an area that leaves him still involved in the accident and still vulnerable to the accident especially when he came down and got involved with throwing the paint and doing, doing the dance and, and became part of the painting itself. Uh, that, was a, that was a really uh, an awakening moment. Jean Cocteau said one of the best things about creating that I ever heard. He said that 98% of creation is accident, 1% is intellect and 1% is logic, and it's learning how to make the accident work for you. should try to start allowing this project to become more accessible. Oh yeah. And allowing, have an event to have a launch where you have a tenth of the space and you have the car on this on a white surface, but the remote control is passed on to someone else. Oh, that's cool. Allow people to engage with technology, allow people to engage with the car. With, with the car. Cool. Because if you were standing next to me and I gave you the remote control, we could have done this together. And that's what I think is cool. I think it's such an internal 
and, and, and very personal experience making a painting. And we're in a very big stage with all these onlookers and all this equipment and all of this. And really what it came down to was making gestures on paper is what that came down to. That painting was, and that's what was really, really satisfying about that to me, was as I said at the beginning, was it could have been a little boy, it could have been a child dipping the, a toy car into, into dishes of paint and doing the same thing. Someone else does a blue, someone else does a yellow, someone else does a red. And all of a sudden you have like this giant, this giant engagement, you know what I'm saying? Social engagement with the brand. Second brand to the people. That's the expression of joy. This is what I learned from this project, you know? Yeah, it's cool. Because I yeah. love design and I think in terms of technology, it's like I'm having fun. Um, Robin Road, South African artist who participated in this project here that we see here. Lots and lots of things are happening for Robin Road. You know, well, to, to work with BMW is quite an easy decision for me. Um, in South Africa, I, I you know, attended a lot of uh, illegal car racing. I'm not sure if I'm al allowed to use the word illegal in this uh, context, but... Uh, the, the irony of that is that there was all this equipment, this fantastic grid, and it was really appealed to my ego anyway. And, um, how long have I been working as an artist? I've been working as an artist. And the car being the paintbrush, I mean, we just were there to record it. That a, that a, that a daily an object, such as an automobile, something which, where, which we see every day, that the world around us can be altered um, into an artistic medium. I think that's what's really interesting, that we begin to look at our world a lot differently and maybe the next generation will, will perceive their world a lot differently, that suddenly a car becomes a, a medium for art and if, an, if, an, if a car can become a medium for art, so can uh, a dustbin on the side of the street become a medium for art, so can a telephone become a medium for art. Uh, so the idea of the everyday or the... Uh, of the, or the object begins to have a different kind of meaning. And uh, this is what I like about the project in that, you know, people who, go, who don't necessarily go to art museums or to art galleries, suddenly we bring, we use the car to bring art to these viewers, to this new audience, and that's what I really like. It makes me feel like running through a field. Really? <laughs> yeah, just there's something free about it. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think it's magnificent. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's different. Very abstract. Fantastic. Really out of the box. Very, very ingenious. First time I've ever seen anything like it. I think it would have been a lot of fun to make. Well, all I could say is I wish I was in that car doing it. I know, yeah. <laughs> We're much saying they use the bright colors to catch the person's eyes, like to make them look at it. Like to make it stand out. I've never seen anything done with car tires before, so. It's how art can be uh, made with just about anything, and, and I think it's very inspirational to see this. The workmanship of the car sort of translate into the workmanship of art as well. To me, it looks like a big roadway 
uh, and you can actually see some movement in the painting. With the circles in it and uh, the lines and the turnarounds from the car, I thought it is ice skating. I love the scale. I wish I, you would have put the whole thing here, um, but just an incredible piece of artwork. Can I, can I buy the car? <laughs>